but you are closer today to the real master plan, to the real profits for Tesla. It was never about making cars, building cars. That's never what Tesla has been about. And I think a lot of people have forgotten that. And when you're this close to really solving autonomous vehicles, and Tesla has put the money in to acquire enough GPUs to actually make this a reality, it's only a matter of time before you get insanely rich in Tesla stock. And that's something that I say to you guys, hopefully you find solace in, you know, like my mom always says it all the time, the days are long, the years are short. It feels like it's been a long time. It feels like Tesla's just can't go anywhere. The stock is in the dump. It feels like it's going to be like that forever. But let me tell you right now, when you get the first lick of the RoboTaxi network, when Tesla says anything about the RoboTaxi network, files a a patent or, um, which that's not the right word, but files an application for the RoboTaxi network in a city, say San Francisco probably first, it is game over for the Bears. Game over. That is ground zero for the Bears. And I've never been more convinced that is coming. I've never been more convinced of of what I just said. Yesterday, following Fed Jerome Powell, Tesla stock did as you would expect it to, was up 2.5%, even up 1% in after hours, as Powell went full bull for the markets. Yet, Tesla's stock actually had a poor day today. The stock was down 1.6%, following news that Lee Auto's $77,000 US dollar vehicle in China is not selling as well as they thought it would. No wonder it's about two times as expensive as Tesla's products in China, which is already seen as a luxury product to begin with. So this vehicle from Li Auto that caused Li Auto to cut their guidance is like a premium, premium product. But yet Wall Street made the comparison that that must be bad news for Tesla. In all reality, this has nothing to do with Tesla at all. I mean, this is the product that you thought was going to sell 50,000 of units in March. Not you, but Lee Auto. You didn't expect that. You didn't. I didn't. Nobody expected that. But Wall Street did. And that's a justifiable reason to get more fearful in Tesla. Let's just get that straight. Does that even sound correct? Not really. In a country where they limited the amount of children you can have, you thought it was a good market to launch a minivan, like a soccer mom van, but little more high-techy looking. I don't think so. The biggest question I have for you, and the reason I bring this up, is you gotta be able to see through the fear in the market. What's justifiable fear and what's not justifiable fear. And today was absolutely unjustified fear in Tesla. Now, with that said, here in this video, I will be reminding you of the master plan that gets Tesla to mega profits. Not mega minivans, but mega profits that lead to your portfolio seeing mega profits as well. Here in this video, I will also share with you my estimates for deliveries this quarter. Now, the estimates on Wall Street, they're way high. I'm going to share with you where I think they're going to be and what presumably will happen to Tesla stock following this delivery number that will be coming out on April 2nd the day after my birthday. And in general, I will be going over when I expect Tesla stock will start to get on a better trajectory. We're not going to the moon anytime soon. Tesla's not gonna rally $100 anytime soon, relatively speaking, over the next month or two. That's really near-term thinking. Over the next 12 months, things could be a lot different. And that's actually great news if you understand the master plan behind tesla you gotta give it a little bit of time and the longer you have to buy the dip if you buy the dip 
that's going to mean you're going to make more money. And I think that's a part of this aspect that people don't understand. You make money when you buy a stock, not when you sell it. Example, if you bought Tesla stock at all-time highs at $414 per share, you have never made money since, even though the company has done well and the company has continued to do well. But if you bought Tesla stock at $100 per share, even if you sold today after Tesla has been the worst performing stock in the S&P 500 year to date, you've still made, let's see, a percent return of about 70%. That's, that's not a small gain. So it is critically important when you buy a stock, it's not as important when you sell a stock, as long as you're not buying this stock at all time highs and it takes 25 years to recover like a Cisco or maybe some people are saying Nvidia these days is the new Cisco. We'll see. Maybe. Arnie Trezzi on X shared this image that really inspired this segment of the video. He, he captions this post with Tesla is a busted growth story in parentheses because that's what everyone has been saying that's what wall street's been saying y you gotta remember wall street guys they're trying to keep clients they're trying to make their clients money whatever's hot at the time they have to invest in they have to talk about and praise tesla was that stock at one point today it's not today it's the opposite today you get praise if you short tesla if you talk negatively about evs and Tesla. And of course, I mean, the Fed has raised rates the most aggressive Tesla's business history has ever seen. Of course, there's going to be some sort of a slowdown. But in spite of all of that and the headwinds and the consumer that's cutting back at McDonald's, Tesla's stock's actual story, the growth in deliveries, is pretty up to the right, if you ask me. So the question you have is why is Tesla stock down in the dumps? Well, in order to support this growth with what I just mentioned and the Fed raising rates and the most aggressive pace they have in Tesla's business history, well, Tesla has had to reduce rates because, again, if you can't afford a, you know, McDouble and a McChicken and a large iced tea, my preferred meal from McDonald's, the two times I go there a year, well, you probably you're not going to afford a $45,000 Tesla or two years ago with an average selling price of $60,000. So Tesla's margins have done this ever since 2022, peaking out at 27%, falling now to about 18 and a quarter percent. I think what's actually impressive here is not the gross margin, but the net margin, because Tesla's net margin has fluctuated during this whole time of gross margins falling. The net margin has really fluctuated between 11, 13, 14, 15 percent. Now, there can be one off adjustments there. Like last quarter, you had a net margin of 15 and a half percent. That was because of that five billion dollar addition to profits based on tax adjustments so not everything is going to make sense when you're looking at the net margin but last quarter not the most recent quarter we just had but the quarter before that you were at a net margin of about 11 percent still very impressive for a quote-unquote automaker but let me remind you, the presuming narrative from Wall Street analysts is not Tesla's margins will get better, but maybe they'll stop dropping at some point and bottom, but not necessarily improve. I'll, I'll be damned, that couldn't happen. That's an impossible feat for Tesla. That's the logic. But they could bottom at some point. I might be the first to tell you this, but when the Fed starts to lower rates, and it sounds like Powell is just begging for an excuse to lower rates at this point, Tesla will be able to raise prices as the monthly payment will fall, as there will be lower rates. That is when Tesla's stock here in the near term, the next 12 months or so, will start to outperform. So if you want the simple answer to when Tesla stock will start to do better, the markets are pricing in the first Fed rate cut, June 12th, 2024. Then they're pricing in the next cut in September, 
The next cut in September is priced in with 44.5% odds. And then we're expecting the next cut in November. If we see any market weakness, well, Tesla is probably not going to be hit first things first because Tesla is already a uh, higher net worth demographic the average buyer of a tesla makes about fifty five thousand dollars a year whereas the average u.s salary is about forty four thousand dollars a year because so keep that in mind it wouldn't surprise me if if the narrative is drawn that tesla would be dramatically you know hit during a shallow weakness period for the markets for the economy that's likely not the case but we are expecting the third rate cut in november if things get worse, even a little bit, Powell's going to start cutting by a lot as it is an election year and he already has a lot of pressure to start cutting rates, let alone if people start to lose their jobs. So really in just simple terms, starting around June, you should see Tesla stock start to outperform. Now, another very interesting aspect that I don't think a lot of people consider enough when investing is what is priced into a stock. When you're buying a stock with a 10 or 20 year outlook, then the, the narrative is a quality company will grow earnings, grow EPS, give that back to shareholders. The stock will go higher via buybacks or if the stock starts to give out dividends. But in the near term, if you're expecting Tesla to go up a lot or, you know, go to new all time highs by 2025, as I expect, I, I have to think something is not priced into the stock. I've pointed this out many, many times for those of you guys here on the channel. I've added a couple different things, but I'll briefly just read you off this list of catalysts. I don't think it's priced into Tesla at all. And why I think this is because nobody's talking about it. Okay, Tesla stock has been falling in the dumps. These can't be priced into Tesla. Number one, better selling of the Model 3 in the US. Pretty straightforward. Number two, smoother Cybertruck ramp. Number three, overall halo effect. Number four, faster than expected Model 2. That's a huge one. We're expecting the Model 2 really in like the fourth quarter of 2025. If we get that coming out in the first or second quarter of 2025, that's a big deal. Number five, Tesla raising prices later in 2024. That is a home run slam dunk that I think is going to be huge for Tesla stock. Part of why I think Tesla is going to hit new all-time highs. Number six and number seven, FSD entering Europe, FSD entering China. Number eight, Tesla talking positive on AI. Number nine, Tesla providing guidance. Number 10, Elon comp package with high market cap tiers. 11, lower lowering the price of FSD. Number 12, FSD free trial. 13, licensing of FSD. And uh, 14, Tesla layoffs. I think these catalysts are only a matter of time. Whether they happen this year or next year, I believe they will happen. Specifically, the most important two catalysts are ones that I am convinced are going to happen. At this point, Tesla is working as fast as possible on the Model 2. I think they're going to be able to bring that to market a lot faster than they expect. Q1, Q2, 2025. That's what I'm expecting. Our number is going to be huge for this. Of course not. You're going to need to see Giga Mexico really ramping up. But Texas has a lot of space as well to manufacture. A lot of space that's not even being used right now. So maybe we can start to get some incremental numbers coming there. But the marketplace, they just want to see the vehicle actually come to reality. And then Tesla will be assigned a larger uh, premium for just getting the vehicle to market and the markets will assign better growth coming there's other reasons for that but that's the simple answer and then tesla raising prices elon made it clear it's all about the monthly payment if you could buy a hundred thousand dollar vehicle at five hundred dollars a month fantastic if you could only buy a thirty thousand dollar vehicle at five hundred dollars a month fantastic that's all people care about is the payment per month that's it. So when the Fed does start to cut rates, and trust me, the Fed is basically begging for a reason to cut rates at this point. At least that's what it sounded like on the press conference that happened yesterday. Well, Tesla's going to start raising prices again, and that's not priced in at all to Tesla stock. But I do think ultimately the biggest thing that's not priced into Tesla stock is the solving of FSD and the robo taxi network. And you know, when when you look at all of these financial experts, these analysts and people that write news topics on Tesla, they have not 
the same intentions as you. You as an investor in Tesla that want to make money in Tesla or just help be a part of the revolution that's helping to better the world, whatever your intentions are, are a lot different than others that are writing articles or covering the stock. They're just trying to do what makes them the most money. And most of the time, 9.9 times out of 10, they are not invested in Tesla and they're paid to talk about what they're talking about. So no wonder you have a lot of negativity in the media. It's popular to bag on Tesla. But when you're actually seeing improvements like this with FSD, it's incredible. Take a look at this tweet from Robert Garrett here on X. He says, first drive with version 12 with with every new update, I am optimistic, and they usually aren't very good. This one is the one. It is amazing. We did our normally 20-minute drive today that usually has 7 to 10 disengagements. Today, zero, with some really difficult situations. He says it's truly amazing. Now, you've also had Dell, their CEO, commented on FSDV12 saying it's very human-like. You've had Holmar's catalog and many others that have covered this topic, but you are closer today to the real master plan, to the real profits for Tesla. It was never about making cars, building cars. That's never what Tesla has been about. And I think a lot of people have forgotten that. And when you're this close to really solving autonomous vehicles and Tesla has put the money in, to acquire enough GPUs to actually make this a reality, it's only a matter of time before you get insanely rich in Tesla stock. And that's something that I say to you guys, hopefully you find solace in, you know, like my mom always says it all the time, the days are long, the years are short. It feels like it, it, it's been a long time. It feels like Tesla's just can't go anywhere. The stock is in the dump. It feels like it's going to be like that forever. But let me tell you right now, when you get the first lick of the RoboTaxi network, when Tesla says anything about the RoboTaxi network, files a, a patent or um, which that's not the right word, but files an application for the RoboTaxi network in a city, say San Francisco, probably first, it is Game over for the Bears. Game over. That is ground zero for the Bears. And I've never been more convinced that is coming. I've never been more convinced of, of what I just said. And uh, a, a lot of it, a lot of this renewed enthusiasm, specifically with the RoboTaxi Network, has been based on B12, and I think we're a lot closer than Wall Street believes. As far as what Wall Street is actually expecting for Tesla's deliveries, while the estimates are very high, you can use Troy Tesla to look at all of these things, but Wall Street is still estimating around 475,000 deliveries. The magic number we need to be is 422,000 deliveries to avoid a negative year-over-year -year number. A negative year-over-year -year number for Tesla would be catastrophic, and it's going to be very hard to to do so. I mean, Tesla is going to have to have botched something big to come in with a negative number. Last year's Q1 total was 422,875 vehicles. I think we're going to come in quite a bit higher than that. Troy's estimate is 435,000. Now, the way that I like to actually do my estimate is fairly pretty simple. So as far as right now, weekly insurance registration numbers for China have totaled about 102,400. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assume the last two weeks are going to be about 13,000 apiece. And I think there's room for an upside surprise there. But that would put you at about 26,000 insurance registrations for China. Now, Europe is usually at about 100,000 uh, deliveries. It seems like we've seen more strength in Europe with many countries in Europe showing new records. So I'll go ahead and assign that 110,000 deliveries, which is 
uh, I believe would be pretty close to a new all-time high, or if not a new all-time high for Europe, it's pretty close there. But Europe tends to be pretty flat, like 100,000 deliveries every single quarter, almost like clockwork. Now, for the U.S., that's the hard part to really figure out, is what are U.S. deliveries like? Well, I found that the U.S. typically delivers about 30% more vehicles than China. And that's the roughest um, kind of way to get the best estimate, in my personal opinion, about 30% more deliveries. Some quarters a little bit less. Some quarters uh, recently have definitely been a little bit less. So you could be more conservative with this. We'll do 0.27, and this is not my final estimate, but this is... Uh, you know, an estimate that I will share with you guys here today. Add that back. And you could be looking at about 163,000 deliveries in the U.S. Now, just adding the U.S., adding China and Europe, you're sitting at about a 401,000 delivery number. Now, if we go with Troy Tesla's estimate for Canada and the rest of the world, these are the ones that usually are not going to make or break um, Tesla's delivery numbers. The most important markets, U.S., China, and uh, Europe. But he has Canada down for about 15,000. That puts you at about 416,000. And then the rest of the world... At about 33,500, that would put my rougher estimate around 449,000, almost 450,000 deliveries. So it's definitely not going to be a new all-time high for Tesla. It's definitely not going to be a blow your socks off kind of quarter, but this would be my better estimate here. I think Troy Tesla, like, he's, he's great at what he does, but... Yeah, you have to consider that the U.S. may have more deliveries than China this time around. Besides last quarter, the U.S. has always had higher deliveries than China. I don't think that changes now. Yeah, maybe last quarter was the start of a new trend, and maybe China has more deliveries every quarter, as as Troy is expecting um, from now on. Besides Q4, he's expecting uh, the U.S. to sell more Teslas than China, but I'm not convinced of that. I think the new Model 3 is selling like a lot in the U.S., although we've had a little bit of production issues. I do believe Tesla's been able to ramp out crank out, ramp out, whatever you want to call it, uh, more than what we have been able to kind of identify. So I think the U.S., if there is anywhere that's going to give us a beat, it's going to be from the U.S. And uh, Europe as well. He only has 88,000 deliveries there, but I think you're going to come in higher than that as most countries are recording new records or very close to new records for Tesla. So my numbers are a little bit different than his. Um, you know, but still, it's not going to be a fantastic quarter. Um, you're still going to come in lower than Wall Street's estimates. But I think if 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 you come in with a number like 450,000, my estimate, th that's going to be seen as potentially uh, not as bad as feared. Maybe Tesla stock actually goes higher on that. Maybe. That, that, that's a big maybe. Uh, generally, if you miss Wall Street's estimates, stocks go lower. But you see a lot with 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 companies when the when the expectations are real low and people are real negative on the stock that even missing estimates but not missing huge can be a good thing and can send a stock higher like maybe demand's not slowing down that much and if that were the case uh, if Tesla comes out at about 450,000 deliveries, Tesla will be able to say their deliveries are like 8% higher year over year. So that's going to be a, a good headline, too, for a lot of the, the bears that think uh, Tesla is going to have a really rough um, 2024, which it definitely could turn out to be that way. Maybe not as rough as what people are expecting. But if you come in near Troy's estimate, 435,000, I don't think there's any way to justify that. Uh, having a good reaction in Tesla stock. That's going to be pretty close to a year of year negative number, and you're only going to be positive like 3%, 4% year over year. And I don't think that's enough to even get Tesla stock moving higher. 
even when the stock has really low expectations. So let me know what you guys think about this. I will keep this uh, number and I will save this here so we can uh, revise this as we get closer to the actual uh, April 2nd delivery number. But I think you're rough, roughly right around 450. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.